Hello everybody, 500 here, welcome to the sled shed. Uh, today we're going to talk about an electric start install. Um, this sled here does not have one in it, but we're going to put one in it. And uh, <clears throat> it's a pretty simple process. Uh, most, of the, most of the sleds now on their wiring harness comes with the plugs already there. You just got to bolt everything on and plug them in. So if, if you have a sled that's pretty hard starting or you know you have a younger kid or something that can't pull start or, or your wife, in, in this case it's my wife's sled, uh, now all she has to do is hit the choke, turn the key and off she goes whenever she wants. She doesn't have to wait for me to pull it when it's cold. Uh, this sled starts really hard when it's cold and then you know when it's warmed up she can pull it no problem but cold is the issue and initial startup so we're gonna we're gonna put one in here and we're gonna show you how to do it and uh, like I said if, if you have a sled that's uh, hard to start and you're thinking about putting an electric start in you can watch us put it in, it's real simple, and uh, do it yourself. So uh, come along and we'll show you how to do it. Okay, so this is everything you're gonna need. Um, I actually, everything everything you see here came off of eBay, believe it or not. Uh, the battery, when it comes, if you're lucky, we'll have a box of acid in in with it. If not, uh, go over to your local automotive store and pick up yourself a bottle of acid. Uh, fill it up, charge it up. Uh, battery box, your starter of course, solenoid, your wiring, your hold down for your battery box, and your clutch with your ring gear on. Now, if you get lucky, if you check the back of your clutch and it's threaded, all you have to do is get the ring gear. This particular sled did not have the threads on it, so we had to go and pick up a whole clutch. And specialty tools for this, you're going to need a clutch puller. Uh, this is, and they're model specific, so you're going to have to look for it if you don't have one already. And that's that. So let's get ready and put her in. Okay, so first thing we gotta do is take the clutch off. Our clutch puller. Now these can usually, these sometimes can be a real problem, but this clutch has already been off, so it's going to come off easy. And if you have the tools, the best thing to use is <laughs> an impact gun. Now the clutch is out. Next, we're going to put the starter in. Uh, this is actually the easiest way to put this in. Um, with, without the, the clutch in is the best way for this model. Put some bolts in here. Okay, now the starter's in, bolted up. <clears throat> Next thing we want to do is put the battery tray in. 
Now we're going to put the battery box in. The battery box <clears throat> has two mounting holes in the belly pan. The Polaris puts them in their knockout holes. You want to knock those out. <clears throat> put your battery box down in here. <clears throat> That's where this guy comes in. We're going to bolt this fast, but it also serves two purposes. It's going to bolt the battery box fast and it's also going to hold the cylinder. We're going to put one side in, but the other side is for a ground, so we're going to leave that off. Okay, next we're going to put the, the battery in. I like to put all the wires on first, only because you get rattling around in here with a wrench and metal on the positive side, then uh, you're basically making a welder. So <clears throat> we, uh, I put those on first. I, I don't know, you know, other people can do it differently, but that's the way I do it. Uh, put our hot wires on. Now all of our electrical connections are hooked up, our solenoid, our hot wire off the battery to the starter, the ground wire from the negative side of the battery is going to go to the engine. We also have a ground wire strap coming down to the solenoid, the ground solenoid out. And then we have our fuse, our 8 amp fuse. Now, if this ever goes bad on you, the the easiest thing to carry with you is an automotive fuse that is uh, amp specific just like you know that's an 8 amp fuse so you want to take an 8 amp automotive fuse and if this goes bad just pull this off hook that in and then hook in the other side and you can get away with getting back to wherever um, yeah, the only other thing is make sure all of your connections are clean and tight. That you run into uh, charging problems and stuff after these start to get corroded. So every year, maybe, you know, well, at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, and maybe the middle of the season, go over all your connections and make sure they're clean and tight. So now the only thing that we have left is to uh, put our clutch back on. So let's do that. Here's our clutch with the ring gear on it. I'm gonna stick that in here. So we'll put the belt on first because it makes it a lot easier. Clutch bolt. There is a torque spec for this, but we're just going to do it on there nice and tight just for demonstration purposes here. Drop the lid. Flip in. All your caps down. Okay, moment of truth, I guess. Let's see if everything works. All right, job well done. So there you have it, electric start from start to finish. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I hope to bring you guys a lot more. So. For now, I'm 500 NDO1. We'll see you out in the snow.